Hello there, this is Ricky Raven. We Ravens are very excited to see you people are finally getting serious about studying some of the many amazing characteristics of us Ravens. But now that some of us are working so close, we hear much of what you say about us and our cousins. One of the more puzzling even your kids are talking about is this idea that birds evolved from some sort of reptile or dinosaur. I'm curious to know, how is that possible? I mean, let's take a look at our feathers. I hear a story of feathers coming from scales, but look, scales and feathers are very different. A reptile scales covers the animal's entire body and it sheds the whole thing at one time. We birds have a completely different soft and pliable skin from which we grow many different kinds of individual feathers that are different sizes, shapes, and densities. They don't cover the entire body for we also have a beak and our legs are different also. And look, our feathers from the long flight feathers on our wings to the soft white down, each and every feather is unique to the one right next to it. Here's one of our long pinion feathers. Let's look closer and closer and closer and closer still. And when you see it at about a thousand times magnification, you see our flight feathers have these little things attached to the shaft called barbs and then yet smaller barbules. On one side, the barbule is very smooth. And on the other side, the barbules have these micro miniature hooks that grab and hold. They line up so perfectly and lock so tight that they can insulate from extreme cold and can even be waterproof. A bird can zip lock them together and unzip them to open them up for cleaning and preening. These micro features alone make a feather a mathematical nightmare. Can anyone explain to me how the genetic programming could have possibly come up with such a thing? Realize you'd have to have a separate genetic code, not only for each and every individual feather, but the ability to have all these many millions of little hooks and barbs that line up absolutely perfectly on every barbule of every single feather. This kind of engineering is way beyond anything science can demonstrate, and yet you seem to think nature's blind tinkering could do this. Wow, how? It should be obvious just our feathers alone are truly complex beyond belief. Darwin even realized that just peacock feathers were far beyond his step-by-step -step ideas. If you're not convinced by this, then please spend a little time online and see exactly how a feather grows. I think you will be totally amazed. So with that in mind, I have to ask, how do you think a feather evolved? Allow me to share the story scientists have so far. First, a scale changed into this little bump, but there are no transitions. Then the bump made some sort of little follicle, but how? And here again, there are no transitions. And even if this was a transition, this transition provides absolutely nothing to the poor creature that would have these worthless little bumps and even more worthless follicles all over its body. There's no way anything like this could make it in the wild. Next, this follicle supposedly became this. What is it? Maybe a down-like feather? And how and why did it split? More importantly, how would the genes receive and then pass on the properties of its splitting? Here again, there are no transitions. Then they claim this to this with somehow a shaft running up the middle. And here again, no transitions and no record how the genes could possibly record this additional shaft, let alone all the splits for all the barbs. And then somehow the barbs magically split yet again, making barbules. And one side of the barbules are smooth and the other side somehow develop these micro hooklets. What they're telling you is that this simple feather somehow evolved into a one of a kind, meticulously engineered flight feather with millions of micro hooks and barbules that just happen to line up perfectly all up and down each and every feather. Again, I ask, how? And with absolutely no transitions. And then I have to wonder, how could the genes magically record and make it work by some 
step-by-step -step process. This so-called scientific story not only ignores the many, many stages needed in between each of these stages, it asks you to overlook properties about genetic engineering that by all scientific experimentation is completely impossible. <laughs> you people are funny because in times past, in order to take anything in science seriously, you used to back up your science with some sort of physical experiment. And perhaps more importantly, others should have been able to successfully repeat that experiment. Otherwise, it was considered nothing but speculation and talk. So, I'm curious, does this sequence we're looking at convince you feathers could have evolved from scales? Because <laughs> for me, it doesn't even qualify as a reasonable hypothesis. It's simply a number of physical characteristics. So much would have to have happened in between each of these stages, there's no way we birds would be sold that this is an evolutionary pathway to our far more complex flight feathers. But that's just the beginning. We have a similar problem with our one-way lungs and air sac. Here again, there are no transitions between the two-way lung system of a reptile and the one-way system of a bird. Our one-way system with air sacs allows us to breathe while ascending and descending thousands of feet in a matter of seconds. Why would a reptile or a dinosaur need such a system? And how could it possibly evolve through the many stages where many of the parts would be completely useless until the whole system was working together, the intermediate stages would have died. And then there's our massive breast muscles needed for flight. Bodybuilders do not pass their massive muscles down to their young, and neither would a dinosaur flapping pass its larger muscles onto its young. Your own science demonstrates genetics just don't work that way. Also, no, we birds have legs covered with scutes that are different from a reptile's scales. Remember, reptiles shed their skin in one sheet. A bird does not shed its scutes. And our legs are uniquely designed so they even stand in freezing water and snow. <laughs> a reptile would not be able to do this. It would die. Then there's our brain. For decades, some people who worked closely with us had predicted science would find something unique about a raven's brain. They saw we were just way too smart for brain size to have anything to do with intelligence. Sure enough, in 2016, your own science has shown a raven's brain is denser and has more tightly packed neurons than most other animals. Less scientific, but just to add, over the history of your reported tracks in the different sediments, bird tracks have been reported in the Permian and Triassic layers. That's supposedly long before you found dinosaurs. And yet these finds are never really addressed. Instead, they are ignored and conveniently swept away as problematic. But in reality, you still have full flying feathered birds, which are found buried with the dinosaurs in layers you call the Cretaceous. Why don't your museums display them that way? If you doubt, I challenge you, do some online research and dig deep and you will find fully flying birds equal to modern birds buried with T-Rex and many other dinosaurs. So I find it strange that some people look at a few creatures that share a few minor characteristics and then claim that they share a common ancestor that doesn't exist. Because when you look, you see the major overwhelming details of these animals are so vastly different from each other. Well, I've looked, I've listened, and I found nothing scientific that demonstrates there's even the remotest possibility that us warm-blooded birds could have evolved from those cold-blooded reptiles or dinosaurs, or that we could possibly share an ancestor that could have given us such wildly different physical attributes. Even in your fossil record, all these animals are either a mosaic with a few fully developed shared characteristics, or they are a full flying bird. There is nothing in the fossil record that could be considered an ancestor to both the dinosaur and the bird, nor are there any transitions. And a transition is something in the process of changing and becoming something else. And that would be something like a reptile stage moving towards a bird-like stage. My simple understanding of your science also tells me if these birds really came from dinosaurs, that step-by-step -step theory 
says there would not be only a few transitions, but that there would be many of them, and there would be many failures also. So the only thing I see in the dino to bird evolution is some proto phantoms and boogie beasts that thus far don't exist in the real world. Question is, what do you find yourself? I'm curious to know, because from everything I've seen and heard, even in the most trusted scientific journals, birds are completely unique. And the dino to bird bit is all wishful speculation. Yeah, it makes a great story. It sells some fun books. It makes very interesting movies. And it may even get some scientists some grant monies. But I'm betting one day you're going to realize it's just science fiction and talk. Thanks for watching.